We can use the same strategy to solve log equations if we need to do so. Now we would put the log into the exponent of the proper base. Let me show you how that works. To solve log x equals 2, the base on this log is a 10. I'm going to rewrite it so you can see it. Log base 10 of x equals 2. So I haven't changed anything. I've only been more explicit about what the base is. The inverse of a log base 10 is 10 to the. The same way the inverse of minus 3 is plus 3. Right? So we can just apply its inverse to both sides. And so that's going to look like this. And again, I'm writing the inverse in a different color so you can see it. I'm going to do 10 to the and leave myself a parenthesis in the exponent. So that's on the left. And I'm going to do 10 to the and put a parenthesis in the exponent on the right. In the left set of parentheses, I'm going to write log base 10 of x. And in the right hand set of parentheses, I'm going to put 2. So now if I read it, I have 10 to the log base 10 of x equals 10 to the second. Well, that whole part on the left, the 10 to the log base 10 of x, that's a function composed with its inverse, which will just be x. And then 10 squared is just going to come out to be 100. So x equals 100. Next, we'll solve natural log of x equals 3. If you remember, natural log of x is really a log with a base e. And if it helps, you can rewrite it that way. You can rewrite this as log base e of x equals 3. That makes it a little easier to see how to undo this log function. We want to exponentiate on both sides. And the inverse of log base e is e to the. So on both sides, I'm going to do e to the and leave a set of parentheses in the exponent. So I'll do an e to the something on the left and an e to the something on the right. On the left, inside the parentheses, I'm going to write log base e of x. And on the right, I'm going to put a 3 in the parentheses. So now it reads e to the log base e of x equals e cubed. Well, I have a function and its inverse that's composed together on the left. And this is going to result in just x. So x equals e cubed, which is roughly 20.0855, rounded to four decimal places. All right, finally, let's solve log base 4 of x equals 0 0.5. Finally, one we don't have to rewrite first. We know what the base is, so we know what the inverse is. Log base 4 of has an inverse 4 to the. So I'm going to do 4 to the something, leave a set of open parentheses on the left, and 4 to the something, leave a set of open parentheses on the right. In those parentheses on the left, I'm going to write log base 4 of x. And in the parentheses on the right, I'll write 0 0.5. So now if I read this whole equation, I have 4 to the log base 4 of x equals 4 to the 0 0.5. On the left, I have a function composed with its inverse, and so this is just going to leave me with x. On the right, I have 4 to the 0.5 or 4 to the 1 half. Remember that a 1 half power is just a square root, so this is really x equals the square root of 4, which means that x equals 2. Now just a final note here. In many countries, especially many European countries, when they say log x in mathematical texts and scientific texts, they actually mean the natural log of x. And so if you're looking for help articles or mathematics in a foreign textbook, make sure you know whether log x is actually base 10 or base e. And you could perform a very simple test to help you know for sure. Just calculate log 10 and make sure the result is 1. So if you type log 10 into Desmos, you should see equals 1. If you type in log 10 and see something else, then most likely the software you're using thinks that log is the natural log. Just to recap, when we compose a function with its inverse, the result is always going to be whatever the input is. So when we did x plus 3 minus 3, we composed a function with its inverse, and the result was x. When we did 2 times x over 2, we composed a function with its inverse, and the result was x. And when we did square root of x to the second power, we composed a function with its inverse, and the result was x. Now, the user interface for logarithms and exponentials is not as nice as those examples. 
Nevertheless, they are inverses of each other. So when you compose an exponential with its corresponding logarithm, we also have a result that is just the input x. This allows us to solve both exponential equations and log equations.